Sophie, wake up! Sophie Newman's eyes snapped open, and then she squeezed them shut again and pressed her hands against her ears. The lights were so bright, so vivid, the sounds of battle so incredibly clear and distinct. Sophie, wake up! The shock of hearing the voice again forced her to open her eyes and look around. She could hear Penelope Flamel as clearly as if she were standing beside her, but there was no one there. She was lying propped against the rough bark of an oak tree, with Josh standing beside her, a thick branch clutched in both hands, desperately beating back terrifying creatures. Sophie slowly pushed herself to her feet, holding onto the tree for support. The last thing she clearly remembered was the bitter odor of rich green wood burning. She remembered saying, fire, and then the rest was a series of confused images, a narrow tunnel, creatures with bird heads and cat skulls. That might have been dreams. As Sophie's eyes adjusted and she looked around, she realized that they had not been dreams. They were completely surrounded by birds and cats, hundreds of them. Some of the cat-headed humans lurked in the long grass and attempted to creep toward them on all fours and on their bellies, spitting and clawing. There were birdmen in the branches of the tree overhead, maneuvering to get close enough to drop down, while others kept hopping in, jabbing at Josh with their evil-looking beaks. On the opposite side of the field, the Yggdrasil burned. The ancient wood snapped and cracked, plumes of white-hot sap boiling up into the pristine air like fireworks. But even as the burnt wood fell away, new growth appeared, fresh and green, in its place. Sophie was conscious of another sound, too, and she realized she was listening to the Yggdrasil. And now, with her incredibly sensitive hearing, she thought she could make out phrases and words, snatches of songs and fragments of poems within the agonized cries of the burning tree. In the distance, she could see Hecate desperately trying to put out the fires, but she was also fighting the Morrigan, the cats, and the birds at the same time. Sophie also noticed that there were no more Nether in the skies, and very few of the Torque Alta remained to guard her their ancient mistress. Closer, Sophie spotted Scatty's bright red hair. She, too, was surrounded by dozens of birds and cats. The warrior was moving in what looked like an intricate dance, twin swords flashing, sending the creatures howling back from her. Scatty was trying to fight her way over to where Nicholas Flamel was lying face down on the ground, beneath the claws of the most terrifying creature Sophie had ever seen. Bastet, the cat goddess. With her incredibly sharp eyesight, the girl could make out the individual whiskers on Bastet's feline face and she actually saw the droplet of saliva gather on the overlarge fangs and drip onto the man below. Flamel saw Sophie looking in his direction. He tried to draw a breath, but it was difficult with the heavy creature standing on top of him. Run, he whispered. Run. Sophie, I only have a few moments. Penelope's voice echoed inside the girl's head, shocking her to full alertness. This is what you must do. You must let me speak through you. Josh became aware that his sister was climbing to her feet, swaying slightly, hands pressed to her ears as if the sounds were too much, eyes squeezed tightly shut. He saw her lips move as if she were talking to herself. He lashed out at a pair of humans with mockingbird heads as they darted forward. The heavy branch caught one of the creatures squarely on the beak and it staggered back, dazed and stunned. The other continued to circle Josh, who realized that it was not coming for him, it was trying to get to Sophie. He turned and lashed out at it, but at that moment, a tall, slender man with a tabby cat's head came bounding toward him. Josh tried to swing the branch, but he was off balance and the cat man ducked under the blow. Then it leapt into the air, mouth gaping, claws extended. With a sour taste at the back of his throat, Josh admitted to himself that he and Sophie were in desperate trouble. He needed to get to his sister. He had to protect her. And in that instant, he knew he was not going to make it. He closed his eyes at the last minute as the savage cat-headed creature slammed into his chest, expecting to feel the sting of its claws, to hear its squalling roar in his face. But all he heard was a gentle purring. He blinked his eyes open and found he was holding a fluffy kitten in his arms. Sophie! He turned around and stopped in awe. Sophie's aura had flared pure silver around her body. It was so dense in places that it even reflected the sunlight, making it appear like a medieval suit of armor. Silver sparks crackled through her hair and dripped from her fingers like liquid. Sophie? Josh whispered, elated. His sister was fine. And then Sophie slowly turned her head to look at Josh, and he experienced the shocking, sickening realization that she didn't recognize him. The birdman that had been moving in to attack the girl suddenly darted forward, beak stabbing at her eyes. Sophie snapped her fingers. 
Tiny droplets of silver spun away from her hands to splash against the creature. Instantly, it folded and twisted in on itself and became a disoriented hermit thrush. Sophie walked past her brother and stepped toward Bastet. No farther, little girl, Bastet commanded, raising a clawed hand. Sophie's eyes opened wide and she smiled, and Josh suddenly found that, for the first time in his life, he was frightened of his own sister. He knew that this wasn't his Sophie. This terrifying creature could not be his twin. When the girl spoke, her voice was a harsh croak. You have no idea what I can do to you. Bastet's huge feline eyes blinked in surprise. You can do nothing to me, little girl. I am no girl. You may be ancient, but you have never encountered anything like me. I possess the raw power that can nullify your magic. I can use it to return the birds and cats to their natural forms. Sophie's head tilted to one side, a gesture Josh knew well. His sister did it when she was listening intently to someone. Then she stretched out her hand toward the dark elder. What do you think would happen if I were to reach out and touch you? Bastet hissed a command and a trio of huge catmen raced toward the girl. Sophie flung her out her arm, and a long, whip-like snaking coil of silver energy flowed from her hand. It touched each of the cats, crackling across their haunches and shoulders, and they immediately came to stumbling halts, rolling and twisting on the ground as they transformed into ordinary, everyday half cats cats. Two short hairs and a ragged-looking Persian. The cats bounded to their feet and streaked off, howling piteously. Sophie spun the whip above her head, scattering drops of liquid silver in every direction. Let me give you a taste of what I can do. The silver whip cracked and snapped as she approached. Scatty suddenly found that three of her adversaries had transformed into an American robin, a house finch, and a song sparrow, while the exotic-looking catman directly in front of her warped into a confused Siamese. Sophie cracked the silver whip again and again, beating away their attackers, droplets of silver splashing everywhere, and more and more of the cat and bird men returned to their natural forms. Get away from Nicholas, she said, her lips not moving in sync with her words. Or we will find out what your true shape is, Bastet, who is also Maftet, Sekhmet, and Menhet. Bastet slowly stepped away from Flamel and raised herself to her full, towering height. Her slip-pupiled eyes were wide, her mouth tightly closed. It has been a long time since anyone has called me by those names. Why? Certainly no modern human eye girl. Sophie's mouth moved, the words taking a moment or two to follow. Beware this girl, Bastet. She is your doom. Bastet's fur was bristling, and her bare arms dimpled with goosebumps. Then she slowly backed away, turned and raced toward the burning Yggdrasil. For the first time in millennia, she was frightened. Nicholas dragged himself to his feet and staggered toward Sophie, Josh, and Scatty. He stepped up to Sophie. Penele, he whispered. Sophie turned her head to him, eyes blank and unseeing. Her mouth worked, and then, in a badly dubbed movie, the words came. I am in San Francisco, held in the basement of Enoch Enterprises. I'm safe and well. Take the children south, Nicholas. There was a long moment of silence. Then, when she spoke again, the words came quicker than Sophie's lips could move and the girl's silver aura began to fade, and her eyes started to close. Take them to the witch. 